Hi, it's Steph, and this evening we're gonna take a walk around the garden and see what's blooming in the middle of July. Starting here with my patio bed. This Wygela here is the My Monet Purple Effect, and it is a dwarf Wygela with purple blooms that blooms in late spring. But even when it's not in bloom, it's really beautiful because it has variegated foliage. And right now it's starting to put on its summer color. So the leaves start off really small when it's blooming. And as the blooms fade, the leaves get larger. And they have three colors on them. They're green, a creamy yellow on the outer margins, and some pink. So it's a really pretty shrub to provide some visual interest in your garden. Here I have a grouping of some allium. Now, unlike the alliums that you grow in the spring that are from bulbs, this particular allium is a perennial allium that you would plant in a clump. And it has this grassy, strappy type foliage, and then all of these buds that are getting ready to open up with these little round purple blooms. I have two varieties of this allium in my garden, the millennium, which is here and blooms first. And then shortly thereafter, I have another variety called amethyst bubbles in my front border that will bloom next. As we move this way, I have a drift of five wee white hydrangeas. Now these hydrangeas are a dwarf type hydrangea. They only get to be 18 to 24 inches tall and wide. So they're great if you have a small space where you wanna add some of these smooth or Annabelle type hydrangeas. The problem I have with them in my garden is that I've had them here for about three years and every year they bloom beautifully, but within a week or so they start to get really crispy. Now I know that water isn't an issue in this area because we get plenty of moisture in this bed. The problem is that it is in a full sun location and I really think that these hydrangeas prefer a bit more shade. So I will be swapping them out. I actually just ordered five of the Tidbit Firelight hydrangeas and I will be removing these and passing them along to someone or planting them in a shadier spot, one or the other, and planting out the new Firelight Tidbits. The Acorus Ogon Sweet Flag that I recently divided is also looking great and starting to put out new shoots. I actually divided it so that I could put some clumps in my new bed over by the driveway. These really like moisture, so because this bed tends to stay a bit wet, um, they do really well here. And lilies, these are oriental lilies and they're actually just past their bloom now. And this variety is a variety called Easy Whisper. And I actually bought it in a pack of bulbs from Walmart and they're gorgeous. They have this very iridescent, like peachy color with a little bit of cream in the center. They're just really, really pretty. And they've multiplied, which is really exciting. I also had some poppies, some purple lilac, or lavender, I believe they're called lilac pom-pom poppies in this area here. My poppies were not as tall this year as they had been last year, but I'm going to let the seeds dry out and drop so that hopefully they'll germinate and I can have um, a stand of poppies in that area again next year. And my cone flowers are starting to really pick up now. Um, they've been blooming for about a week and a half or so. And um, I have a few varieties in this bed and I really love them. So we'll go through what the varieties that I have are. But my lavender, I have a grouping of three lavenders here and the pollinators love this. Um, any type of purple flower I find that they're really attracted to, whether it be lavender, nepeta, salvia, they just really are drawn to it. And the lavender smells amazing. This variety that I have in my garden, I grew from seed. I purchased the seeds from MI Gardener and they are called Munstead English Lavender. And um, maybe they've been here, I wanna say three or four years now. And um, they were easy to grow from seed using the winter sowing method and they've been really happy in this bed. In fact, there's a couple of bees right here, right now. Now this variety of coneflower here is a double, and this is called the Double Scoop Raspberry. And I really love these double scoop varieties. I know that some people say they're not as attractive to pollinators because of the center of them, but I do still find pollinators on them. 
here in the front here is some of the hyssop, the golden jubilee hyssop that I grew from seed using winter sowing. And it's just starting to pick up some size now. I really love the color of the foliage and it should bloom with purple spike flowers. As we come along to the back of the bed, this beautiful uh, standard blue spruce is looking really lovely. It's been here, this is its second year, and I'm really enjoying that icy blue color of that shrub and it provides beautiful winter interest. And the rest of my cone flowers in this area here. So this variety here, I believe is the version of the Echinacea purpurea. Now it is much shorter than the ones that I have in the front yard. But what happens is sometimes when you buy seed packets, there could be one or two rogue seeds that get in there. So the variety might be slightly different than the purpurea, but it is still really beautiful and I'm really enjoying it. And I also have um, here, this one is called bubblegum. It's also another double variety. And the clump has gotten pretty small. It used to be a lot larger. But because this bed, like I've mentioned a couple of times, um, stays a little bit moist, um, I do believe that there is a little bit of crown rot happening on some of these cone flowers. Um, so I'm probably going to move them to a different spot or keep an eye on things and see if I need to remedy the situation before I lose them completely. I will likely have to pop them up so that they can uh, dry out a little bit between waterings and see if I can save them. This beautiful variety here is called Cantaloupe Supreme and it's by Monrovia and it's got this gorgeous like cantaloupe color bloom. I just love it. This is probably one of my favorite cone flowers, but there is one that's going to rival that and it is this one that I grew from seed and it's called Green Envy. It has pink in the center and green tips and this year the clump is a lot larger. This is its, uh, I want to say, third year in my garden. The first year it did not bloom. Last year it did bloom with a couple of blooms and this year I have quite a few. So that is really exciting, but I'm really enjoying this cone flower. And recently on my trip to Pennsylvania, I picked up a variety called Sunseeker Rainbow and it's like a sherbet color. It starts off a bit orange and then it fades to pink, also really pretty. And here is the one that I started with. This is the first cone flower that I ever added to my garden, and it is the Pow Wow Wildberry. This one self seeds prolifically. I have a grouping here, one by the fountain, one over there, and they all just dropped seed and started new plants for me. And I've also given quite a few away. So it is a beautiful cone flower and uh, really prolific. And that is this bed. Well, there's one more plant I want to show you, and it is one of my favorite yarrows and it is right here. I also have a couple of clumps of this within this bed, and this is called the um, Tutti Fruity Apricot Delight. And while it is now starting to fade, this goes through three separate colors. It will start right here with this like rosy color, a bit darker than that actually. And then it'll fade to this really pretty light salmon, and then it almost takes even a more light salmon kind of cream color. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm really enjoying it. And right here in my Rose ICU, um, if you recall, I made a video sh not too long ago where I had dug up these roses that were really struggling in this bed because of the moisture and I potted them up to see if they could recover. And I'm happy to report that they have leafed out with all new foliage. So it's really exciting to see that they still have some life left and hopefully I can find a better spot in the garden to plant them. In these baskets, I just planted some random things that I wasn't sure what to do with. And in fact, I still haven't even put out my patio furniture for the season. I'm a little bit behind this year, but I have some Russian sage in here and some multi-stem incredible um, sunflowers that I'm hoping will bloom with the purple um, Russian sage and look really pretty. And I stuck an extra dahlia tuber in this basket called Totally Tangerine. So we'll see how that goes. I'm really experimenting with growing dahlias in containers this year. In fact, right behind George here, I have a couple of pots that I planted some HS, uh, H single HS or HS single date. I never really quite know how to say it, but I bought them from Long, um, Longfield Gardens and they are like a apricot colored 
dahlia. Single petaled, but really pretty. And so what I did this year was I put them in my planters and the foliage is looking really beautiful. It has this dark foliage. It's a little bit of insect damage, but I did pinch them and they're starting to bud up. I think it's called HS Date, the name of the dahlia. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So any day now we should start getting some really pretty blooms. And George actually really likes this dahlia. So I thought because I had two tubers, let me try them in some containers here on our back patio and see how it goes. And in the front of the container, this has really taken off. This is uh, Lesamachia, I believe it's called, Creeping Jenny. And so um, a friend had given me some of this and I think it looks really beautiful as a trailer in front of my dark containers. And here are my Firelight Tidbit Hydrangeas that I just got in the mail. So I will be working on planting these up pretty soon and I'll be sure to share that with you. They actually look really, really healthy and I was really happy with them. And if you recall, when I went to the tractor supply and I purchased some um, canna lilies, bare root canna lilies, well, here they are. One of them is actually getting ready to bloom. This was a really pretty salmon color. The foliage is looking really beautiful and healthy. And uh, like I said, the first bloom is getting ready. It's all budded up and getting ready to open. So there were two of those. So I have one for either side. When I finally get my furniture out here, I'll be able to place them. But the elephant ear that I purchased at Lowe's, the dark foliage elephant ear is really starting to pick up now. And look at the size of this. I thought that the blooms or that the leaves rather were gonna be fairly small because when it first started to open up, the foliage was smaller, but it is really picking up size now and every leaf is bigger than the last. This one is gorgeous. I'm actually gonna to try to overwinter this um, corm or bulb or tuber, whichever you call an elephant air, um, overwinter to see if I can grow it again next year. Um, and I actually have some geraniums in pots that I overwintered that are also looking really nice. These are two years old now. I overwintered them in my basement last year and they are full of buds. Look at this. It's a really beautiful light pink. This one is the same variety. It has some buds as well. And then this is another one. This really pretty coral pink. I really like the way they coordinate with these pots or planters. This one also has a really beautiful leaf. Okay, let's head over to my shed area. One more pot. I also picked up some caladium bulbs at Walmart um, late winter when everyone was looking for caladiums and there happened to be a shortage of them. Well, I finally found some at Walmart and look how beautiful they look. I'm keeping them here in this area because it's a little bit shadier and caladiums prefer shade and this light foliage will really burn if it's in too much sun. So, so far it's been happy in this spot. And right here on this side of the shed, my astilbe is blooming. I have a couple of different varieties of astilbe here. The one in the center finished blooming maybe a couple of weeks ago. And now I have two other groupings that are currently blooming. The varieties here are Sunny Boy and Visions in Pink. And they're just such a pretty shade flower. They do like water and they will bloom best if they're fertilized. So in early spring, late winter, if you give them a feed with something like a granular fertilizer, I use Plantone, um, it really, they respond well to that. They also prefer a little bit of moisture. So if it hasn't rained, you wanna make sure to water them, especially as they're starting to put on their foliage to make sure that they bloom really nicely. And I'm really enjoying these here under this tree. This is a magnolia that blooms beautifully in spring. So it provides just enough shade for these still be to be happy in this spot. My anemones have all started to leaf out and I can see that I have a little bit of bunny damage here. So I'm not sure that I'll get any blooms this year. I actually just noticed as I'm walking by here that it looks like they've been biting at these, which is always a little sad. So I'll have to make sure to spray the anemones if I have any chance of getting any blooms. But this beauty here, I absolutely love it. This has put on so much growth. This is a quick fire hydrangea and it is the traditional quick fire, which gets to be pretty large. Um, in fact, George is probably gonna roll his eyes at me when I say that it gets six to eight feet tall and wide because he is afraid of shrubs that get too large. Um, but it is just so beautiful. Look at it, like how can you not love it, right? It's got a really open panicle type bloom. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. 
and I really love it. So I'm okay with it filling up this whole corner. In fact, I planted it back here on purpose so that it could get as big as it wants. My climbing rose, my Zephyrine Ruin, <laughs> has definitely seen better days. Um, I know that I've mentioned before that Roses and I, we just have a little bit of a tumultuous relationship. And I do have to, you know, it's I have to train this, but these canes have now gotten a little bit too hard. They're not as pliable. So I might just have to prune this back really hard and just let new growth come and start training it again. But it happens sometimes, right? We can only do what we can do. And this beautiful dark foliage plant here is the hardy hibiscus. This particular variety is by Proven Winners and it is called, um, oh, what is it called again? Perfect Storm, that's what it is. Too many names of plants to remember. So this is the Perfect Storm Hardy Hibiscus. And what I really love about this one is it's got this dark foliage. Now this powdery look that you see to them, that is not powdery mildew. It's actually invisible fence deer and rabbit. I had to spray this one because if you've never grown hibiscus before in your garden, be aware that deer really like them. So they will eat the buds right off and then you won't get any beautiful blooms. So because I don't have enough deer spikes for every plant in my garden that I need to protect, I did have to spray this one. But it has these really beautiful dinner plate sized blooms that are a light pink with a really dark center of either a fuchsia or red. Gorgeous, really tropical looking. And my planters that we potted up a few weeks ago when I put together my fountain um, are looking really beautiful. The Mandevilla just had a really big flush and now there's a bunch of new buds that are starting to open up as well and I really love the white variety I think. and I also added some Creeping Jenny in the front that's now starting to um, grow a bit better. I had transplanted it from the other planters so it took and it's starting to grow. The same with the window boxes and one of my favorite hydrangeas in my garden the little lime hydrangea is all budded up and I already actually have one that is starting to bloom. These are absolutely beautiful. They go through such a large array of color change and they have such a long season of interest. When they first open up, they have a bit of a, like kind of like a limey green coloring. If you look here, they have a little bit of a lime green coloring and then they open up to this beautiful creamy color. And then as we get later into the summer and the evenings start to get cooler, they start to take on a pink hue. And even in the fall, they have a beautiful um, coloring with shades of mauve. They're just stunning. And they have really large panicles. And the good thing about the little lime is that it stays more compact. Where the traditional limelight gets to be about six to eight feet tall and wide, the little lime stays in the three to five foot tall and wide range, which is great. It's more compact. And right here behind my hedge of little lime hydrangeas, I have some Japanese iris and sada called Teramisu. And they started blooming about a week after I filmed my June garden tour. And they were absolutely beautiful. So this area here, we recently did a tour of the Japanese maple garden and not much has changed. We'll just look at a couple of things in this area. Recently, I transplanted some of these Japanese painted ferns. They were in this area to my right in front of the walking path here, but they were getting too much sun. So I moved them just a little bit here where they're getting shaded by this Ariadne Japanese maple. And just that little move from there to here where they're getting a little more shade, they've responded beautifully. They've put on a bunch of new growth and are looking gorgeous. This is a really beautiful fern. It has almost like this white, pastel look to it with a bit of a red veining just really pretty and the laura petalum or the chinese french flower that we planted that janie had sent me in our uh, cross-country plant swap is also looking really beautiful in fact it just bloomed look at that there's a couple more buds really cool now, I'm not sure when these are actually supposed to bloom. I believe they're supposed to bloom in early spring, but the fact that it did bloom here in my garden tells me that it must be happy, which is a good sign. My dark side of the moon astilbe is blooming. I just noticed this bloom stalk, and it has one, two, and I planted this about two or three weeks ago, but what I really thought was cool about this plant was its dark foliage. 
It's an astilbe with dark leaves and it looks like it has red stems. So even when it's not in bloom, this foliage provides a lot of interest. Here in this bed in my front borders, um, there's not a whole lot going on right now. My day lilies are just starting to pick up. In fact, this is the first one that's really blooming and it's called Persian Prince or Persian Market. I'll flash the name on the screen if it comes to me, but I have quite a few varieties of day lilies. So sometimes it gets hard to remember, but it's a really beautiful, large pink bloom and the deer spike is helping keep deer away because they absolutely love day lilies. I also have some phlox in the back there um, that is now blooming. This was a phlox that was given to me by my sister-in-law and it's got a really pretty light pink lavender color and I really like it. It will start blooming a bit more soon. And this here, which is the larkspur, still hasn't bloomed yet. So at this point, um, I'm just patiently waiting to see uh, what happens with that. It was started from seed over a year ago. So we'll see, we'll see how it looks in a few more weeks. And right here, I have a large grouping of the Echinacea purpurea, which is the native coneflower. And I did grow this from seed and they also self seed prolifically. So if you leave these bloom heads up after they're done blooming, they will drop some seeds and create new plants for you. In fact, I have a grouping of them that just popped up behind my hose box right in the back there against the house. And right here, I have a little purple balloon flower that's popping up. I used to have these planted in this bed, but it was a variety that got kind of tall and it would flop in the center and it always looked pretty messy. So I ended up pulling it out, but they have really long tap roots. So every year I end up getting a little seedling and a couple of purple balloon flowers that show up. But these are fun because they look like a little balloon that you could almost pop right before they open. So they are pretty, but I just prefer the shorter varieties. The Mandevilla on the front porch is also looking really pretty. It's really starting to pick up with a lot more blooms now. And even the Lantana has put on quite a bit of growth since our last tour in June. Um, lots of pretty buds, shades of yellow and orange and pink, just really pretty. And I thought that they would coordinate really well with the Mandevilla. And even the Creeping Jenny has really, really taken off in these pots. Um, they've filled out and now they're gonna start trailing. So I'm really happy with the arrangement of these this year, and it's probably a combination that I will repeat again. Here in my main walkway bed, I recently deadheaded all of my double pink knockout roses after their really big first flush last month in June. And so now they're reloading and starting to put out new foliage. You can always tell the new foliage because it's red and some fresh buds for the next bloom. And my cone flowers. This is a variety called White Swan, and I started these from seed. This is their third season, and they have these really tall and large blooms of white cone flowers. They're absolutely beautiful, and I have a few groupings of them as we get down the walkway. But before we move to the next grouping of cone flower, I really want to show you this random foxglove that popped up. Now, I did show you all the seedlings that I have from the foxgloves that I grew here last year. There are a ton of seedlings, but I didn't expect this one to grow and to bloom this year. So that was a really nice surprise. They say that once you have foxgloves in your garden, you'll always have them because they self seed so prolifically, but they are really beautiful flower and I'm happy to have them in my garden. But here is the other grouping of the white swan cone flowers, and you can see how tall they are. I'm about 5'4", and they're hitting me right here. So they're probably three and a half feet tall or so, closer to four feet. So they're a really good size and really beautiful. I'm just hoping that the wind doesn't knock them over because they're looking so gorgeous right now. Um, and also some daisies, which are another really pretty white bloom. I have a whole grouping of daisies back in that area there with my um, arborvitae right behind it. It's a forever goldy arborvitae. It has a really pretty yellow color. This spirea here is also a great spirea. If you have a small space in your garden and you want a compact spirea, this is called the Proven Winners Color Choice Candy Corn Spirea. And they call it that because it has this yellow and orange and kind of red color on the new growth. It just finished blooming last month with these clusters of pink flowers, but the color of it is just enough reason to grow it because it's really beautiful. It offers a nice pop of chartreuse yellow green color to your border. 
And this beautiful evergreen shrub here is my gold mop cypress. In fact, I limbed it up and I shaped it into a small topiary tree. And I really love the way that it turned out. But in order for me to size control it, I do go through and I prune it periodically. In fact, it just finished putting on all of its spring growth. So I probably will go through and prune it in a few weeks. But I also have this gorgeous hanoki here that I just love and evergreens are such a beautiful backdrop for all of your other plants. And of course in winter when there's nothing in bloom you still have these beautiful things to look at. I have a blue star juniper down there so I have a combo of yellow with green and blue and then the red Japanese maple. Um, I try to use that combination which I think a lot of people who design gardens use the rule of the red, blue, green and yellow and then another grouping of daisies, which I think looks really beautiful between the blue shrub and backed by the uh, Forever Goldie Arborvitae. So in this bed here, things are also just starting to pick up. And I have a grouping or a drift here of five bobo hydrangeas that are now all budded up and will be blooming shortly. And right behind them, I have some clumps of liatris or gay feather that is also starting to bloom. It's another purple spike flower that the pollinators and bees absolutely love. This is where I have my other variety of alliums, the perennial alliums. This variety is called amethyst bubbles, and I have a grouping of three here and in the other corner. And these are the ones that usually start blooming shortly after the millennium. Although this year they seem to look like they're kind of going at the same pace. Things in the garden this year have been a little different than in years prior, so you never really know. Things change from year to year. And here in the front, we planted up these dwarf or short zinnias a couple of weeks ago. They're called the Zahara double raspberry squirrel zinnia, and they are now all budded up, and hopefully they'll start blooming any day now. And also this Blue Horizon ageratum has started to bloom. This is an annual that my friend Catherine started from seed and she graciously shared some with me. And I also have some lilies that are gonna start blooming here. They're oriental lilies called Casablanca. If the deer don't find them, they should look really pretty. I don't have any deer spikes here, so I'll have to spray. But I have another one of those My Monet Purple Effect Wygelas in this spot here. And the foliage is also looking really beautiful. And the bare root lupin that we had purchased at the tractor supply in the spring, there were five bare root plants in the package. I had potted them up to grow them on a little bit before planting. One of them ended up rotting, but I still ended up with four of them. And here's one of them. And it's looking really good. And there's another right here that also is putting out a bunch of new shoots. And I have two more planted on the other side of this weeping blue spruce. Now we didn't get blooms this year because they were just started from bare root. But my guess is that if they make it over the winter, which right now they're looking really good, so they should, we will have a beautiful lupin bloom show next spring. Well, we've made it to the end of the July garden tour. I hope that you've enjoyed checking out what's in bloom right now in mid-July. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.